is she interested or is she just being nice? Gosh, it can be so confusing whether you should go for it and risk asking her out or hit that eject button early on. If you're in that position, don't worry, you're not the only one. I'm Sonic Kim, America's face of dating, and today I want to go into full, in-depth detail on what it looks like when she's got the, the hots for you. I received an email from a man named Brayden inquiring on inquiring about a girl who he's been talking to for a little while now, he says, and he wants to know, he's asked whether we can decipher if the girl's interested in him or just being nice or just totally is not interested at all. And so before we jump into his email and dissect it, you must be wondering, Selna, what is this magnificent Picasso-like piece of artwork you have on this board behind you? And I must say that for you, I drew it twice. And the first time I drew it, I was like, this is unacceptable. I must redo this piece. And the second time I did it, it came out the exact same. Like shit. But like my fourth grade art teacher once told me, she said, it's not about the artwork itself. It's about the heart you put into it. And she told me that right before she gave me a D in the class. But whatever, it's water under the bridge. But what is this? So you would see these colors in our class. These are the primary colors, red, yellow, and blue, and mixed together in their shades. So... I designed this piece when I first started getting into promoting some of the world's biggest, most region hotspot clubs. And so I designed this because I wanted to tell when I first started talking to a girl, even before I even started talking to her, before you even said a word, word you can determine where she's at interest-wise for you, whether she's or she really has the hots for you or not, and determine what your next steps need to be in order to get her to the red zone, which is where you want her to be right here. The red zone is where she's in love with you, where she's addicted to you, where she's obsessed with you. And that's really where you want her to be and where you want her to stay. And my point is that she's gonna be somewhere on this chart and you wanna move her through these stages to get her to the red zone eventually. So that's the little synopsis of it before we jump into it. But first we're gonna go through Brayden's email here and we're gonna see if whether this girl has interest in her or not. And then we're gonna, then we're gonna talk about some of the biggest interest indicators when she really has the hots for you. So Brayden says, yo, Selna, a few months ago, I met a girl through my friend group in college. My name is Brayden. I go to Indiana university. I remember when I promoted down there and this story, I remember this story this is a wild story. So me and one of my partners were promoted down there for little five. And that's where like 25,000 people travel from across the country. I think across the world, just to go to this event, some like biking event, I believe. But the parties down there during the, that week are insane. I remember this one girl, we were promoting, it was like Bluebird or Brothers, something like that, I can't remember, but we we're in this club and this girl was obviously very, very tipsy or she had drugs or a combination of the two because she got up on the table and she starts stripping down her clothing. <laughs> And the club's going fucking nuts. Like it's a Lady Gaga concert. They're taking out their phones and they're recording her doing this. And uh, her boyfriend's trying to get her off the table because she's she's dancing on the table, stripping on the table, taking off her clothing and teasing the crowd basically. And the guards are trying to get her off the table and she's slapping them away and kicking them away. And the boyfriend's trying to do the same. And I remember at one point she takes off her bra and goes completely topless and throws it into the crowd. And the crowd's going just in, insane. <laughs> I don't know, like, I don't know if anyone's watching has ever been to Little Five before, but... If you haven't, I recommend that you attend it at least one time in your lifetime because it's it's nuts. You know, attend it when Koba is not being a dick though, because it's obviously not going to be nuts right now. But you know, if you're in the Midwest at the during the time, I'd go to it. So he says, you said in your video three ways to always get the kiss: that girls will put themselves into your orbit, hoping that you get the hint and make a move on her. It's true because you know men are about purpose and mission and success and usually women are not going to be the ones that ask the man out unless they're in the red orange zone or the red zone uh, and, and they're just basically throwing themselves onto you. They're not going to ask you out. They want to see if you have the balls to go for it and go for it successfully winning her over. It's because women want to test you. They want to see what you got basically. And they respond to a man who is able to go for it and get it successful. It's a successful risk taker. They call it. Women are very, very attracted to a man like that. He says, so I made a move to get, the, to get her in person on a date. 
I told her that my friends and I are all going out to the clubs for one of my friend's birthday parties. The week, that week on a Wednesday, I asked her if she wanted to come out with me to celebrate. So, something to really think about is that, a couple things here. Do you really want her to be around your friends for your, I think it's your first date, as you say? You kind of hinted at that. Yeah, it's your first date. So, I mean, think about it. It's On your first date, you really want to, iso- unless you meet her in the club, you still want to find a way to isolate her, but you want to have a time alone with her. So like bad date ideas are like a movie or taking her to a club because it's so loud you can't even talk to her. You're not able to, You for seduction to happen, you guys need to have conversation. You need to have mystery. You need to have romance. And so you need to know who each other really are and talk to each other and really, you know, really find your way into her heart. And you can't do that really in a club where you can't have that communication. And the other thing is that your friends, your drunk friends, you know, I don't know how much you trust them or are friends with them. But I could totally see this going sideways because imagine your first time with this girl, you're trying to impress her, you're trying to, you know, just be with her. And one of your drunk friends comes up and he's like, oh, wow, like, who's your girlfriend here? He comes up and he's like, oh, wow, I've never seen my friend with a girl before. And totally just like, (laughs) it's totally messing it up for you and taking it sideways, you know, and then she's going to be, it's going to become awkward and she's going to avoid you the rest of the night and you're going to totally ruin your chance with this girl. So you really need to think about that. (laughs) Is that a good idea? Probably not. He says, she responds the next day with, I'll check if I can go and let you know if I can't. She says, I'll check if I can go and I'll let you know if I can go a day later. So two things is that what she's really saying here is that I don't want to go, but I don't want to reject you and hurt your feelings. So I'm probably just going to like check and then not ever text you back. So I don't have to like hurt your feelings. Right. (laughs) So, and the other thing is that she's responding when you said days later. Like, if a girl wants you and she really has the hots for you, she's going to find time to talk to you uh, as as soon as possible. And days later, that's not as soon as possible. Because I heard this quote once, and I follow this quote. It's so good. It says, some will talk to you in their free time, and others will free their time to talk to you. When a woman wants you, then she is not going to let anything come in between her having you or talking to you, she's going to make time to talk to you, whether that's on her lunch break at work, whether that's she has to sacrifice sleep for it, but she's going to find a way to talk to you. And when she doesn't want to talk to you, then you're going to know because she's going to respond days later like this girl. So already we're not looking good on if she's interested in you or, or if she's interested in you or not. He says, that Saturday came for the party. So I texted her that afternoon and asked, did you check if you can go tonight? So... One of the biggest turnoffs for a woman is neediness. And when you send this text, when she, when a woman tells you, I'll check if I can, I'll check if I can go and I'll get back to you, you need to give her that time to get back to you. And if she never gets back to you, then you have to let her be because she did you a favor. Because why are you going to pursue someone who doesn't want you? A lot of men's problems in relationships and dating and attraction is that they chase that which does not want them and they become miserable, miserable because of it. So she literally is helping you out here because she's telling you she's not that interested and giving you the opportunity to go pursue someone who will who will give you that effort, who will show you that effort. But again, one of the biggest turnoffs for a woman is neediness. And when you're sending this text, when she told you she's going to get back to you and you're over here like, did you check if you can go tonight? You're like forcing yourself onto her. You're being needy and clingy. And what's this telling her is that, you know, that's, what's, that's what the theme for that entire night is going to be. It's going to be you being clingy and needy. And she's going to try to avoid that at all, at all costs because... Once a woman associates you with more pain to being with you than pleasure, then she's not going to want to hang out with you. And so when you're forcing yourself onto her, she's associating you as very needy and clingy, and they're going to avoid that. He says, she responded that night while I was out of the party and said, I've had a long week of school, so I wanted to stay home tonight. So basically, she's not interested. She's in the blue section. The blue section is the very opposite of red. She doesn't want you, basically. And so she's not that she's obviously not that interested in you. And the fact that she responded hours later, she definitely saw that text. I guarantee you she saw that text, but she's like, I'm going to respond later when he's already out. So I don't have to basically have this awkward conversation that I don't want to go and tell him that I don't want to go. He says, I asked her, my other friend is coming here next weekend. Would you like to come? Would you like to come to the bars with us? And she just replied, she just replied, okay. 
Should I wait to text her again? Should I reply? Do I have a chance? So you literally asked her, my other friend is coming here next weekend. Would you like to come out with us to the bars? And she just replied, okay. That was a yes or no question. And she literally said, okay. <laughs> Basically that says to me, like, I'm not, I'm just not interested in you. So he says, do I still have a chance? I would, I would move on, but let's, let's get into this chart a little bit more in detail and, and tell you some sure signs that she wants you. So, like I said, I designed this chart when I first got into club promoting and it's, it's to tell you where she's at in the exact moment. I talk about this more in my book, but the goal of this chart is to really, once you analyze where she's at on this chart, then you are able to use the techniques I talk about and use the techniques in my book to move her through the stages to get her to fall for you and to become obsessed with you and addicted to you because it takes time, it takes stages. And, you know, once you get really good, you can do it in one night. Let's just go into detail on what this really is. So red here, this red means that she's, she's in love with you, that she's addicted to you. She said, she says things like, I've never felt this about a guy before, you know, like I would be lost without you. So that's the red zone here. Little like synopsis, the blue zone here, this is the very opposite. She doesn't text you back. She does not want you. You know, she's ghosting you basically. And a lot of guys' problems in relationships and attraction dating, like I said, and the same with, with our email here is that he's chasing someone that doesn't want him. And a lot of people's problems is that they chase that, which doesn't reciprocate the same that you give to them, the same effort that you give to them. And that's this blue section right here. The yellow section right here is the in-between of those two. It's like she can go either way, basically. Like she can end up falling for you or she could just be like, I don't really want him. So, so let's start here. The red-orange section, the orange to red-orange section. This really, the red-orange section, that's where she starts to fall for you, basically. And so some of the sure signs that you know she's here is that she will start to get jealous of other girls. Basically, like she'll see you talking to another girl and she'll be like, well, who's that? You know, what, do you like her? Are you, do you think she's cute? You know, like, not like insecure, but, you know, she's going to be a little bit jealous of other girls coming on to you. Uh, and she might be hinting about boyfriend and girlfriend. She might stay, she might say things like, I've never felt this way about a guy before. Uh, she sends a lot of emojis over text. And so speaking of the insecure thing, I wanted to point this out because you probably noticed that I have not talked about the purple section yet down here at the bottom. And this purple section, this is what I call the no-no zone. You do not want to involve yourself with girls like this. This is the hot and cold type of girl, the insecure type of girl, the girl that's passive aggressive or insecure, the type of girl that if you don't text her back in 30 seconds, she's going to be all over your ass like, why haven't you texted me back? You know, she's going to get really mad at you and she's going to ignore you on purpose to punish you. One of my dad told me this story about this one girl. Uh, he, he had, he was obsessed with this cheerleader in high school. He said, and he said that she was everything that he wanted, basically like his, his high school dream. And he said that he sat next to her, I think it was in math class. And he tried to talk to her every day and she was giving him one word replies like, mm -hmm, like cool. Or like, she would just totally ignore him. And he said at one point she didn't even know his name or like who he was. When, when he asked like what his name was. <laughs> and so my dad worked hard and he ended up buying himself this brand new, I think it was a pearl white Corvette. <laughs> He's probably gonna watch this and be like, it was not that car, you know, whatever. It, it was a beautiful car, whatever it was. And he buys this car and the only one at the school and he comes back with it and everyone knows who he is at that point. And so he pulls up with it the first day and what do you think this cheerleader does? She, she not only wants to talk to him now, but she, he said that she ran down, literally ran down the hallway to catch up, to walk with him. And she was like, are you the guy with the Corvette? And my dad said, he looked back at her and he was like, yeah, who are you again? Or do I know you? I think he said, do I know you? <laughs> so gold diggers, gold diggers are in this purple section as well. If you date someone who's passive aggressive or insecure or, you know, potential cheater, I heard this one quote the other day. It said, when you ignore the signs in the beginning, those are going to be the same reasons why the relationship ends. Basically, like when you ignore the signs that she's a cheater, that she's insecure, that she's passive aggressive, those are going to be the same reasons why the relationship eventually ends in the future. And so 
do not date people in the purple zone like that or it's going to make your life miserable. It's going to be very fucking draining. So anyways, let's move on to a little bit more talking about this orange and, and red orange section. So one of my notes here says her pupils will dilate when you're looking into her eyes. And this is a very, very fascinating one because we're going to talk, we're going to put that up here about in the orange, the yellow orange to the orange section, because there's been, there's been studies on this actually. And one of the tests that I like to do with a girl at the beginning is that I'll tell her, I was like, we, I was like, it's, it's said that studies have shown that if you look in each other's eyes for 30 seconds, then your heart rate will actually sink at the same pace. And she'll want to try it, obviously. And start, you start looking into her eyes for 30 seconds. You have to stare into each other's left eye. And while you're looking, you're not actually looking for like the heart rates or anything to sink. You're looking into her pupils because you want to see what her pupils are doing. And her pupils will actually pulse. They'll expand and get bigger and smaller and they'll contract. And that's what happens when a girl likes you is that her pupils will keep expanding and, and and dilating and then shrinking and then expanding again when she's looking at you. It's very fascinating. If you've seen a cat hunt, you can see that its pupils will get extremely large to where you can't even see the iris anymore. And that's the same with a girl. Her eyes will get extreme, her, her pupils will expand to the point where they're big and they'll keep basically pulsing. It's a very, very fascinating study. And they don't know why that the pupils do that, but the rumor is that when she's looking at you, it's because your pupils will dilate because they say that it's because they want you, your body is basically saying that it wants to see more of you. Your pupils dilate because it's like, I want to take in more of you. It's very fascinating. And then, so that's like up here in the, in the yellow orange sections, when she finds you attractive, her pupils will start to dilate like that. But while you're doing that 30 second test, she will actually, if she really, really likes you, then she's going to burst out laughing and like not be able to do it she will not be able to handle handle that for 30 seconds. So if she really likes you, that'll happen. She'll be about, about in this area right here, about in the orange section. And so another one in the yellow section here, this is a very, very, this is also a really, really good one. So I was in Montana um, a couple, about a year and a half ago, two years ago. And if you know Montana, you know, it's very nature. There's mountains there. It's beautiful. But it's not the place that you go to basically pick up girls. You go to get girls. You go there basically to isolate yourself and be alone with nature. And I was there with my family. And we were hiking this trail. And while we're hiking this trail, the end was at this beautiful waterfall. And so it was my family and then another family there. And then the other family had this girl that was about my age. She was this blonde-haired girl. Uh, I wasn't attracted to her, but she was clearly attracted to me. And I, I realized that she was because there was this piece of fuzz in the air. I remember it flew by my face and I, I reached out and I tried to grab it and pull it in. Cause I don't know why I just, I just tried to reach out and grab it and I missed and it kept flowing with the wind and it blew past her and she did the exact same thing. She tried to reach out and grab it. And she missed and then she looked at me and that's when I knew that she was attracted to me is when she mirrored my movements. And so she would not have done that probably if she wasn't observing what I was doing. So her mind was subconsciously paying attention to me. So if she starts to like, you know, if she does something like that, it's a sure tail sign that she's interested in you because it's basically a tell that she's interested in you. And in poker, a tell is basically uh, an indicator in your body language that she's attracted to you or that someone's lying. Basically, in a tell, they're bluffing. Like they'll pull their ear or they'll start like looking side to side or something like that or they'll start rubbing like their hair. And so it's a tell in their body language that they're interested in you. And that's one of the points that we're going to talk about in the yellow zone. Most of the people that you find are going to be in this zone right here. They're going to be in the yellow, the yellow, the yellow to green or the yellow to orange zone. And they're going to be kind of wishy-washy. Like you won't, you won't know exactly where they're at here, but you'll know that they're like, you know, kind of on and off. Like they're like, maybe you're attractive. And one of the ways to find out they're in the yellow zone, if they're attracted to you is their body language. And so what I was talking about was, you know, the tell in poker if someone's bluffing. So you can, you're able to tell someone's bluffing. And this, it's the same when someone's attracted to you. You can tell in their body language when they're interested in you. For example, if they're around this area right here, their body language is going to be able to, you're going to see it in their body language. For example, the girl, when she's around someone she likes, you're going to see them sometimes. They're going to start itching their back of their wrists. 
And that's what happens when they're injured. I don't know why that happens. We don't know why that happens, but they'll start playing with their hands like this. And it's because they get, when a woman's around a man that she likes, she starts to get this itch on the back of her wrist. It's really interesting if you watch women that are around a man that they like. Uh, also, it's like a magnet in a way where have you ever tried to put two positive magnets together? And so you're trying to force them together. And no matter what, like the magnet will always like, turn away and like get, be repulsed by the other magnet, right? And that's the same when a woman does not like you is that her body language, like she'll be closed off and she'll be away from you. However, when you try to put two positive, like a positive and a negative magnet together, the, the, the magnets will actually turn and click into each other. And so when she's interested in you, her body language is going to be facing you. She's going to be open to you. She's not going to have her arms crossed. She's going to be looking you in the eyes. She's going to be laughing. And she's also, she's also going to be playing with her hair. My dad had these beautiful tropical birds called macaws. And he said that they loved him so much that they would come and step on his shoulder and their be that he would, they would put his hair in their beaks and they would basically like, like do that. And like, it's called preening the hair. They're trying to clean your hair for you. And so girls, when they're around someone they like, they're going to start playing with their hair and twirling it between their fingers and like streaming because they're trying to like make their hair look good. And they don't know that they're doing it. It's just a subconscious trigger in their mind. Like, I like this guy. So I want to look good for him. They know how men work. And also on that note is that they're going to have their chest out more and their ass out more because they know they're not stupid. They know what, they know how to get a man, right? They know what men like and they want the man to notice them. And so that's people in the yellow zone when, you know, that's how you know that they're, they're interested in you. But the red, the, the orange yellow section, that's when they're starting to form a crush on you basically. And you want to take them and move them all the way to the red zone. And that's what a lot of my book is about is using techniques and figuring out where she's at on the interest table so you can move her to the red zone over time and become quicker at it. One more tip before I end this video is that something that men need to realize is that a lot of men, they try to go for the best woman, right? They want the best woman. They focus on the woman. But there's this point in my book that I talk about. It's called the law of duality. And men are focusing on the wrong things, I believe, because the law of duality states that if there's an in, there's an out. If there's an up, there's a down. If there's a light, then there's also a shadow. So everything has an inverse to its, I mean, outverse, I guess is how you say it. And so what I'm trying to say is that men tend to be so focused on getting the girl and that's not what they should be focused on because if you think of this as a tree bearing fruit so many men are focused on bearing the ripest the biggest the best fruits and when you focus on the fruits you never get them instead you need to not focus on the fruits at all and you need to focus on the roots of that plant or tree that's growing the fruits you need to focus on the roots if you make the roots bigger stronger thicker more healthy and that tends to bear greater fruit. And so instead of men focusing on getting the girl, you know, getting the girl here, they need to focus on themselves and their words. They need to focus on becoming a more confident man, a better looking man, a healthier man, a more passionate man, inspired man that's focused on his mission, his drive, his success, focuses on his own roots and grows himself. Because once a man does that, then they're gonna find, this is what I found is that more people, more women that you talk to, when you focus on yourself as a man and growing yourself and growing your, your circumstance to a better one, more girls, when you talk to them, they're going to start out in this orange zone. They're going to want you. And it's because you're focused on the right things. But when you're not, then you're going to find that more girls are going to be in the green, the yellow section. You're going to end up losing them because you don't have the game to get them to the red section. So take the time and work on yourself as a man is what I'm trying to say. There's going to be a part two to this video where I talk about uh, indicators of disinterest. And so I talked about all the indicators of where she's, you know, where you know that she's interested in you, but I'm going to do a part two video about the indicators of disinterest. And so make sure you tune into that part two. And it's a really good video because I talk about a man who actually had the very opposite of this email. He emailed me in the other day about a girl who actually liked him it was in the red, like the red orange section. And she, he ended up trying to game her, which you don't do in that section because she's basically throwing herself onto you. And she lost interest all the way down to the blue section. And she totally is ghosting him now. So make sure you tune in that email, tune in that, that video newsletter. I'm Sona Kim, America's Face of Dating, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>